All right, so let's talk about section 4.3, searching with non-deterministic actions. So what does this mean? Non-deterministic means that you can't be sure of the outcome of an action that you're gonna take, All right? So deterministic actions means you got a state, you apply an action to it, that leads directly to another state, right? State plus action equals state, right? Now, if you've got non-deterministic actions, that's not the case anymore, right? So state plus an action could lead to multiple states, okay? So um, depending on the outcome of the action, right? That's the actions aren't reliable anymore is the basic idea, okay? Um, now, Percepts themselves, they're useful in partially observable and or non-deterministic environments. So, you know, we've been used to talk about percepts in, in, you know, fully observable or in a deterministic environment that you see a percept, right? Or you take a percept and that tells you about something like right freaking now and it's solid and it's not going to change on you, okay, from the moment that you perceive it. Okay, but in uh, non-deterministic environments or in environments where you can't see everything, they're not 100% reliable, but they can still be used to help, right? I mean, the, the environment is not 100% reliable, okay? You may not be able to see everything, but percepts can still even then be useful, okay? So in a partially observable environment, um, the percepts can help you figure out, well, what state could I be in, right? I don't know 100% for certain what state I'm in, but um, what state could I be in? Well, I can perceive certain things about my environment if, even if I can't observe everything because it's only partially observable. And then in non-deterministic environments, again, uh, this is a situation where the outcome of an action is not predetermined. In other words, you could have multiple outcomes from a particular action that's been applied to a state that the agent finds itself in. Okay, so in that situation, then the percepts can let the agent know, okay, well, what was the action, or excuse me, what was the outcome of the action that you took, okay? Now, in either case, you can't determine what the percepts are in advance, right? You can't experience something until you've experienced it, but after you've experienced something, you can tell what the outcome was of that experience, okay? So, in such a situation, the solution to your search I remember in chapter three, you had a, you, you went through your entire search tree and your solution was a sequence of actions, right? Do your action A, B, C, D, and E from your initial state is gonna transition you through all these different states until you hit your goal state, right? Well, if the actions, the outcome of those actions aren't reliable, you can't do that anymore, right? So you don't have a sequence of actions as your solution, but a, what the text refers to as a contingency plan or a strategy where you can say, okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, I'm gonna take this action, and then you know, there could be three possible outcomes to that action, okay? So I'm gonna take action A, and then I'm gonna have out possible outcome one, two, and three, okay? And then for each one of those outcomes, I'll have an action that I can take from there, okay? And then it just kind of uh, recursively repeats. You have to take into consideration all the possibilities that could be the result of an action that you take. Well, if A happens, then I'll do this. Well, if B happens, then I'll do this, right? So if I'm in a particular state, I take an action and the result of that action is A, well, then I'm gonna have to do this. If the result of that action is B, well, then I'm gonna have to do this other thing, okay? And hopefully, hopefully that made sense. So, you know, what you're doing is telling the agent what to do for possible realities. For, so agent, depending on the outcome of the action you take right now, Here's what you're going to do, All right? So the uh, toy problem that the text uses to illustrate this point is the idea of the erratic vacuum world. So remember from chapter three, we had the vacuum world. There were eight possible states, okay, that, the, that you could find yourself in, that the agent could find itself in, the agent being the vacuum, right? Um, you know, the first one, both squares dirty, agent in the left square. Another one, um, agent in the left square, left square dirty, right square clean, uh, et cetera, right? So in that environment, actions were deterministic and everything was fully observable. It was deterministic because if you told the agent to move right, it went from 
uh, state three to state four, no questions asked. There's no, there's no doubt about that, right? Non-deterministic, right? If we were to make this, modify this environment to make it non-deterministic, it would mean that some action that you gave it or that you told it to do wasn't automatically guaranteed to transition into some predetermined state, right? So it may not be the case where if the agent finds itself in state three and you tell it, move right, maybe it doesn't move right. Maybe it stays where it's at. Maybe it's a slippery uh, problem, right? So you don't know if the outcome is gonna be in that case state four or state three, right? Could be one of two possibilities, okay? But here's another um, example, right? Um, and we'll come back to that, that slippery problem here in a second. Again, what if the vacuum is unpredictable? It's unpredictable if you don't know for a fact what the outcome of an action is going to be. It's non-deterministic. Okay, so example. Say you go to suck, okay, and it's not guaranteed anymore. What's going to be the result of, the, of you sucking, right? Um, well, if you suck hard enough, you move to Las Vegas, but that's another story. Um, you know, right now in the Chapter 3 version, the deterministic definition of the vacuum world problem if you suck on a dirty square, the dirt's gone, clean square. Okay, but what if instead there's a couple of possibilities? Let's say that the vacuum cleaner's on a dirty square, okay, and you know, you do the suck on the dirty square, and hey, it'll clean that square, but sometimes, you know, the square adjacent gets dirt dumped into it. Okay, maybe that's a result. Maybe you sucked so hard that it shot dirt out the other side of the vacuum into the square next to you, making it dirty. What if you take a suck action on a clean square, right? And um, the dirt gets dumped onto the clean square instead of, you know, nothing happening. Okay, so it's not 100% reliable anymore. Okay, so our sucking is we can't rely on it. There could be a couple of different outcomes to doing the sucking action, right? So if that's the case, then that result function that we had in chapter three, we got to modify a little bit. We got to generalize the transition model. So it's no longer a one-to-one -one model where suck means clean square. Now there could be multiple states that result, right? So the textbook refers to that as, let's call it instead of, Let's go ahead and change it to where that results function can give you a set of possible outcome states, not just one, right? Or not just a set that has one element in it, but everything that could be possibly, everything that could be, um, that could possibly happen, all of the possible results. So if you've got the suck in uh, state one, then that results in a state in set state five or state seven so let's go back okay so if you're in five here okay and you do your suck action well the results could be or excuse me in state one sorry if you're in state one the results could be that you're in state five or state seven that could be the outcome okay so okay why is that because one of the potential actions is that not only do you clean the square that you're currently in, but also the adjacent square, right? So applying the suck action with state one, one plus suck equals not five, but five or seven, right? So there's two possible outcomes there. It's not deterministic anymore. Okay, so what that means is, is that we can't have that reliable sequence of actions anymore like we had in the previous chapter. So instead we need a contingency, right? So the way the textbook writes this out in a pseudo-coding kind of way is, you know, go ahead and do your sucking, okay? But if the result is that you ended up in state five, right? If you do your sucking and you result in state five, then what should you do, right? What action should you take? Well, then you should go right and then try to suck again. Now remember, right is reliable, right is deterministic. It's just suck that's not deterministic, okay? So if after you do your suck in, in state one, you find yourself in state five, then go right and suck, right? Otherwise you're done because 
that would mean that you were in state seven and the floor is clean. Okay. So what you have is, is you have a bunch of if else kind of statements, right? Or um, if then else statements or nested if statements, right? Or nested if then else statements. If you're in this state, then do this, right? Um, if you're in this state, then do this, else do the other thing. Okay, so you have all kinds of uh, combinations of that. And, um, you know, depending on the type of problem that you're dealing with. And so essentially what you have are forms of trees. But the thing is, is these are different types of trees. Okay, because the search trees that we were developing in chapter three were all based off of deterministic actions, right? Where one parent definitely led to one child, right? Because you'd have the parent and then that action that you would take that would transition from one to one, okay? Now here, the trees are gonna have to be different because one action could lead you to a couple of different states, okay? And so that leads us to the idea of these things called um, and or search trees, okay? So these types of trees have two types of nodes. There's the and node and there's the or node, okay? So the and node is a node that forces an agent to deal with all of the child actions okay and then the or node is like what we were used to before okay we'd have the agent choose the left or the right action okay but an and node says well we have to deal with all the possible child actions okay so um you know you had you know in the previous examples you know one um you know like i was saying just a second ago you have a node apply an action leads you to another node, right? And so then the, the search would just proceed in that direction. But the thing is, is that when you apply an action to that node now, it could lead to multiple other nodes, right? So that's why you have to have this, um, this differentiation between and nodes and or nodes. Okay, so I'm gonna draw you a picture of this and then um, I'll point you to the algorithm again and I'll just point out the pieces of it. And uh, I got a link on Blackboard um, that it's a really simple algorithm. It's recursive, so there's not a lot of code to it. So I'm not going to go into it too deeply anyway, because I'm going to start handing that off to you a little bit more now. Um, but you'll see, uh, I got a link on Blackboard that takes you to the source code repo. And in Python, it's really easy to read. I mean, it's it's not very few, many lines of code like at all. So you'll be able to pick you'll be able to pick it up really quick. Okay. Um, and I'm going to draw you a picture to give you an overview of how the thing works. So hold on right there. I'm going to switch over to the whiteboard. All right. So I'm not going to do anything too fancy here. I don't think I, I need to uh, for you to get the ID here. So we'll just we'll try to keep it quick. And I'll just walk you through the example from um, figure 410. Because you might be looking at that going, what, the, what, what, what does that all mean? I don't even, I don't, uh, what? Okay. So um, we'll just go through that figure and... Uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just we'll just talk about it, okay? All right. So the state nodes themselves, those are your OR nodes, and that's what you're used to from chapter three, okay? So let's say that you start off with the initial state, okay? Um, like they have in the text, and what do you have there? You got the dirt in both the squares, right, and uh, a vacuum. I'll just use V for vacuum, so I'm not gonna be able to draw that out, okay? And um, that was your first state, which was what, state one, I guess. Okay, so from there, you've got two possible actions that you could take, right? So that's where the or comes in. Well, I can do this, or I can do that. Okay, that's your or. And so what were the two possible actions that the agent could take um, from that state? There was suck, suck some dirt, or move to the right. Okay, now here's where the AND nodes come in. Okay, now the AND nodes are represented as um, circles. Okay, and the nodes, I mean, it's it's more of these AND nodes are more of um, in the in the OR nodes. It's not like you have um, necessarily you know struct node uh, AND. Okay, uh, when you look at the recursive algorithm it uses recursion in the recursive uh, the recursion tree to, to build this 
this search, right? So it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. Um, but anyways, let me continue on. So you're gonna get um, two possible, two possibilities after doing some sucking, right? Because you have the possibility that just the one square gets cleaned up or both squares get cleaned up. Because, you know, one of the things why it's not deterministic is that it's so powerful that you might suck up the dirt in the adjacent square. So your plan as the search progresses has to take into uh, consideration both possibilities. It has to have a contingency. Well, what state did I actually end up in? Right? And that's where that if uh, else comes in, right? The if then as, as it's written in the text. Well, am I in this state? Cool. If so, then do that. Otherwise, you know, if I'm in this state, do the other thing. Because you don't know. It's not guaranteed. You have to have an if. You have to test. Well, which state am I actually in? It's not a given anymore. It's not deterministic. Okay. So if the result was the double suck in action, right? Um, you could transition into state, I think it was uh, state seven, right? And that is where both of the squares are clean and the vacuum cleaner never moved because all it did was suck and it sucked up both, both dirts, right? Um, but the other possibility is that, and this is your and, is that the vacuum cleaner did it suck in, but it only cleaned up the one square. And so that was, um, yeah, state five. I got it written down or, you know, in front of me, but I don't, I don't have the state numbers memorized, okay? So that's a possibility. Now over on the right-hand side, uh, when you move right, there's no non-determinism there, right? It's, it's purely deterministic. There's nothing wrong with moving the, um, the vacuum cleaner. There's no, nothing broken with it. So it's predictable, it's deterministic. So that's definitely gonna lead you to the state that looks like this, right? So that and, a node is pretty pretty simple, right? Because there's only one possibility here. Okay, now um, let's continue along the left-hand side of the tree here, and I'll continue explaining these things. Well, this is the goal, right? So the algorithm is going to stop there. It's not going to try to deter. It's not going to try to come up with. Um, you know, there's no there's no oring here, right? There's no more actions to be applied that are going to lead you to an AND node. Because it's a goal. It's a, this is a goal state. Okay, so this guy, this guy's done. The search is going to terminate down that path. Okay. Now, what about for um, state five? Well, state five. Two possibilities again. Now remember, these are all OR nodes. Okay, you can move right. Okay, and that's a purely deterministic uh, operation. Okay. And uh, that will definitely lead you to a particular state where there's dirt here and there's a vacuum there. And that was, um, what state was that? Do I have it up here yet? No, I don't, so I'll have to look, sorry. Uh, state six, okay? State six, right? No doubt that you're gonna end up there, okay? But what was your other uh, possibility, right? The other possibility uh, was to suck, okay? Now, if you suck here, uh, that's gonna leave you to an and, right? Now, oops, I uh, built off of the wrong part of the tree, so let me clean that. My bad, right? So, um, you can go only one possibility, go right, that leads to um, state six. So uh, what about from state six, what are your possibilities? Okay, well, your possibilities are, uh, suck here, that's where I was going. I just was starting to hang my suck action off of the wrong, off the wrong state. Okay, so what are the possibilities um, for the sucking from state six. Well, there's there's really only one possible outcome that could occur because of what could happen from state six, from sucking on state six, because, um, you know, if you suck and it's successful, well then that right square gets clean. 
Uh, or both squares could get clean. Well, the left square is clean already anyway. So that's going to lead you to um, not state seven, but state eight, because we got the vacuum cleaner on the right hand side. Okay, so that's a goal. Okay, cool. Okay, now the other uh, possibility was to move left. Okay, and that's deterministic. So there's only one possible result of that. And that would be to move um, the vacuum cleaner to the left, right? But that leads us to a loop because look, that basically takes us back up to state five, right? That's, that's kind of a loop going on now. And um, so we won't continue building the tree in that direction. Matter of fact, the search would terminate here because you'll see a feature of the and or algorithm is that it keeps track of uh, a path and um, it remembers states that it's generated before. And so as soon as it sees a state that it saw earlier in the path, well, then it's just gonna stop searching down that subtree, okay? Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else we had to build off of this? Uh, state five, uh, t -t 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 -t. yeah, 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 actually, actually we can do something off of state five, can't we? Because we had goal five, yeah, we can, we can do sucking off of this. I just lost my place, all right? So this says, um, if you're, if you suck, yeah, you can, I'm sorry, I totally, I totally lost my place when I was going through the explanation, hopefully I didn't confuse you. Because remember, you can suck on a clean square, and that was one of the non-deterministic actions you could have, right? Because if you suck on a clean square, it might dump dirt at the square, okay? So we need to have an and here, right? Because we can do this or this, and there's two possible results of doing the sucking, right? So we got another and, and what are those possibilities, right? Well, we could, dump dirt on the clean square, right? And in that case, does that take us back to our original state? Yeah, that takes us back up to state one, or that's a repeat of state one, which is another form of a loop. Um, or if we were in that left-hand side and we did suck in, it could end up to where both uh, squares um, end up as being as being the same as where we came from okay because if you suck on a, a clean square well you know nothing changes right um that was one possible outcome the other possible outcome of sucking on a clean square was that you made a dirty square okay and so that's a loop also because that would take us back up to the original state, right? So that's a repeat of uh, state, what was it, state uh, five, right? So the algorithm would check its path and go, oh, well, I've already seen this, and so I'm not gonna continue down this search uh, anymore. Now, what about the right side over here? Well, the results of this OR node, right? What are the options that you could take? Well, you could move left, and if you move left, that's deterministic. Keep drawing boxes. It's gonna lead you to your and. They always alternate, they always alternate, they always alternate. Okay, and there's only one possible outcome of that. And that is, since it's deterministic. Okay. And that brings you back to state one, which is also a loop. So the search would terminate going down that subtree or down that branch because um, we would have kept track of where we came from, the fact that we already saw state one. So the search would terminate down that branch, okay? And it would continue down the other way. So uh, what was the other uh, option here, suck? Okay, so what are the two possibilities? I would have to branch off of our and node here. Well, um, one is that you only suck uh, the dirt out of your current square, right? And then the other is that you clean both of them, right? And that is a goal uh, node, okay? Um, and so from here, the search K 
can continue, and so forth, right? So the idea is, big idea just to summarize, look, you got your OR nodes, and those are, represent states, okay? Now you apply, you consider what all the actions are, and then you apply those actions to come up with your, where you think are gonna be your new states or your new possible states, right? And so you need that AND node to generate those two child states in this case, right? You know, what happens if the sucking worked uh, one way? What happens if the sucking worked the other way? Okay, and then the search just repeats recursively over and over and over again. So the question then becomes, well, what is a solution? Okay, well, a solution is going to be um, a path where every leaf node is a goal, right? Every leaf node is a goal. And so that's what the figure is highlighting, okay? So that's one leaf, which is a goal, right? And so then we could go down this way, right? It would terminate down here. These leaf nodes are not goals, right? So you, that's not gonna be part of our, our uh, plan, okay? Looking down here. Okay, now again, going down this direction, the search terminates with a leaf that's not a goal leaf. Okay, but this one is. So this would be part of our plan, right? So first thing you do, suck, right? Then you got your ifs. Well, if uh, state seven, then do nothing, okay? If state five, then go right, right? Now, once you've gone right, you know that you're in this state because it's deterministic. And then from here, you would say, all right, um, go ahead and uh, suck, right? Well, suck, what happens? Well, um, you know, if you're in state eight, well, then you're done, right? So it's a series of if-elses that make up the plan, right? So your solution is a plan not a sequence, okay? So, you know, something like suck if state equals seven, then do nothing, right? Uh, else, you know, then done, you know, then do nothing. Okay, because that would be it, that'd be, you, that'd be over. Your, your agent wouldn't have anything else to do, right? Done. Else, if state equals five, then what? Then you go right, right? Then after you go right, if state equals six and so forth, okay? Okay, so let me hop you back over to the slides uh, to finish this uh, discussion off really quick. And uh, we'll be done, this will be, be a quicker cut. Um, so I want to speed this, this stuff up here. You're kind of like, you call this fast? You call this speeding things up? I'm trying, man. <laughs> um, it's This is a really fun class to do in person because, you know, we're drawing, we're talking back and forth. Um, it's a lot more dry probably in this format. But, you know, what are you going to do? It's either that or we risk death and ruining our health, right? And maybe by now you've heard um, that... You probably have heard by now. You must have, right? Because this is going to come out in a, you know, after you know, week, week two or two weeks. This module is going to be available after two weeks after they made the announcement. Um, you know, CSU is going to be doing distance learning again in the in the in the spring of 2021, and that's no surprise. I mean, it really isn't. I mean, that there's, I was totally expecting that. There's there's no way, it's not safe to go back right now, in the United States, the hardest hit country in the world. Uh, during a global plague. Uh, we have anecdotal evidence from other states that have tried to open. They just shut them right back down, you know, and multiple teachers have died already. It's just not safe. There's just no way. It, it, it would be better, you know, to know that you're going to go into the semester distance learning rather than start the semester for a couple weeks, then have to quarantine everybody and then shut your class down. I mean, I, I totally think it's the right decision. And I know that's going to upset some people because they hate distance learning. I get it. Um, but when it's that or risking death or long-term disability, we're going to have to go with distance learning. 
Uh, anyway, so here's um, here's the algorithm, right? Um, so you're feeding it your problem fine. You got a, a, a driver function that starts everything off with the or search, and uh, the or search uh, function is you know the beginning of what you would think, right? You're feeding it a actual node, so you're getting that initial state, problem definition, and then you see these uh, these brackets right here. That represents um, a path. Okay, and so what's happening is, is that's building up a list of all the states that have been generated in the search so far. And as the search progresses, it's looking back against that path. And as soon as you generate a new state that's already in the path, the search terminates at that point. Okay, and so that way you don't end up with endless loops. Okay, so hand trace through uh, the algorithm on your own. Look at the sample code. I put a link on Blackboard. Uh, that shows you how to go look at the Python code for it, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, their plan takes, and path takes the form of um, a list, a Python list. I think it's, there's a new revision of it. In past versions, they used a dictionary for it, but they're using lists in it now. Uh, so yeah, so the or search gets past a state, you know, all that problem information in the path. And then when you initially call it, it's an empty, empty list. It returns a conditional plan or failure. So if it's uh, the goal state, then return the empty plan. You, you're done. There's nothing else. There's nothing else to do going down that, going down that, uh, that branch. You know, because there's nothing. If that's a goal state, you're not going to continue trying to advance. You're not going to be applying any actions to your goal state. It's the goal state, right? Um, and so here it is, where it says if state is on path and return failure. This is what I was talking about. It's your base case. You know, stop the search. Okay, um, but otherwise for each action and problem actions do, and then this is where you do the and search to generate your and nodes. Um, if not failure, then this right here, this notation, it just means um, you know add an action to your overall plan that you're gonna you're gonna take. Okay, and then for the and search, this is basically saying hey for every possible state um, that uh, that could exist. Remember when we were drawing off of the AND um, node, right? There were all the different child states. This is saying recursively run the OR search on each one of them. Okay, and then eventually you're going to get to a point where um, you're returning your complete contingency. If you're in this state, then do that. Otherwise, if you're in this state, then do that. Otherwise, if you're in this state, you know, then do that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so. Hopefully that's enough information to, to, to give you. Uh, if not, if that wasn't 100% clear, look at the sample code, man. Um, honestly, it'll be it'll 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 spell it right out for you, and uh, it's gonna work. Trace it out on your own, like I drew it, and uh, you'll see how this thing how this thing works. You know, just pick uh, one of the states from Vacuum World uh, at random, right? So in that figure that I drew for you, and my drawing was a little bit different than this one. Because uh, I didn't copy it exactly, um, you know. Start with a different state. Start start from state five, you know, and then trace through the algorithm and see how it plays out. Go a few levels, right? Get get comfortable with it. I'm not going to ask you to implement this for the homework. You're not going to have a homework assignment where you have to write it. The big idea here is that look, if you are not in a deterministic world, then you have to um, take into consideration what the possible outcomes could be. That's, that's the idea. And so you have to modify the, you know, your search algorithm to take into consideration you know, the multitude of states that could result from the action that you take or that your agent takes from the action that it finds itself in. Okay? And the percepts come into play here, go, come in full circle. We said you, know, you can confirm after you take your action what state you ended up in. Even if it's not deterministic, the percepts are still uh, useful because once you take that suck action, right? You know you, the agent can perceive, oh, am I in the goal? Cool, then I'm done. That's it. It's over. Right? There's nothing else to do. We don't have to execute any further part of our plan. We went from dirty floor to clean floor all in one action. Awesome. But if you don't find yourself with a clean floor, completely clean floor, right? You perceived that there's still dirt then that must mean you're in state five. And so now here's what you do. Okay, agent, it's not a clean floor. 
you must be in state five. So here's what you're gonna do. If you find yourself in state five after sucking, move right, okay? And then after you move right, uh, do some sucking because you're gonna be in state six. That's, this is deterministic. I mean, you still have to have the end of it for it's just that there's gonna be only one child state. Or excuse me, the, uh, yeah, the end of it, sorry. And then from there, you know, you're gonna suck. And um, the only possibility is either one square clean or both squares uh, clean. So you've hit your goal, right? So um, there's two possible ways that you can get to a clean floor, essentially, right? You can go down this path or you can end up down this path. So it's not just one sequence of actions. You have to take into consideration that you could go in either direction here, right? These are, these are two possibilities of doing sucking from where you started at. So you can get to the goal of a clean floor in one of two different ways, okay? And so you have to take that in consideration. Uh, right, so one last little thing here, um, and this goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning. Uh, what happens if um, the vacuum cleaner fails to move, right? And so all the textbook is talking about here is, you know, a different type of determinism or non-determinism where, you know, it's possible that you know, if you give the order or the action to move right, well, either it'll move right or you won't move at all. You just end up right where you are, right? So here you could give the order to move right, but you could end up in this state or you could end up in this state. So you've still got um, your and nodes that have to be generated. It's just that um, instead of, they talk about instead of, you know, completely having to generate a whole nother separate node here, right? Um, as part of your plan, you could label or include a label with certain actions that says, okay, if you do this, um, instead of generating a brand new uh, state, a brand new or node, just, just go back to the previous one, you know, according to this label, okay? Um, and so you could have Cyclic, cyclic solutions. You can have solutions where there are cycles in them, I almost forgot. Because if the solution lies down, um, if the path to the solution lies down, or if the, if the goal, sorry, if the goal of your solution lies down this path, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't even know why you're watching this video still. Um, just because you slipped, right? Just because you, you backtracked, doesn't mean that you still can't get down to the goal. You just have to try again. You have to be able to keep going, keep going, keep trying to get off of that stuck spot, okay? All right, um, so if we have that ability to have a cyclic solution, then what we have is a loop. So one, another way of putting it, here's kind of the pseudocody thing that they, that they include in the book, book, but another way you could think of it is, while the state equals five, perform the right action. While you're in state five, keep trying to go right. Keep trying to go right, keep trying to go right. Eventually, you'll get unstuck and you'll get down to your goal uh, state down here. Okay, so don't give up after one try. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this this is gonna work. If, if, if it's possible, right, that um, the action will eventually occur, okay, then, then this works, right? Um, if it's possible that if you keep trying, to do that action, keep banging your head against that wall, eventually you're gonna bust through that wall, then this approach is gonna is gonna work for you. Okay. You know, it's kind of the, the example they give you is you know, if you're rolling a D6 over and over, a six headed die, boom, 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 and you're looking for a five. Don't just quit, you know, after one roll or after two rolls. If eventually you will be able to find your solution, then yeah, yeah, go ahead, keep just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. How are you gonna know that? You know, it's going to depend upon how you define your problem. Okay, it's going to depend on the environment, whether or not it's possible. And so then you build that support for cyclical solutions into your algorithm or not based off of the uh, problem definition. Okay. All right. So I'll put another cut in here. I know um, the genetic algorithms plus what I just described is probably going to have the same running time as a normal um, lecture. So I'll cut it there, and um, when I come back, I gotta do just a little bit at the beginning of um, section 4.4, and then that'll take you through, sounds bad to say, but recycled content from the previous semester, 
and so you're not going to see my face in the bottom right hand corner um, probably for the rest of the semester which you're probably happy about <laughs> uh, you don't have to look at it you don't have to stare at my ugly face um, you know for the rest of the semester at least at least at least there uh, right so there you go and um, that's going to take us to about three-fifths of the way through the course, I think. Um, just to give you kind of a, a, a pause in the middle here. Um, because we're going to finish off Chapter 4. We're going to go to 5. We're going to learn how to play against an AI, play a game, simple game against AI. Uh, and then we're going to move on to, um, to different types of logic problems. Um, and it's going to be weird because we're going to start talking about you know, different types of logic and how you can form arguments and all that kind of stuff, which is going to be really, really crazy. And there'll be a little bit of learning in there. But anyway, I'll shut up now. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.